topical finasteride. People have been asking me to talk about topical finasteride. So first of all, the purpose of topical finasteride is to elicit its effect in target tissues. So in this case, we're talking about the scalp and we're talking about the hair follicles without having an impact on the rest of your body, right? So pretty much we want to see 5-alpha reductase inhibition in the scalp resulting in low DHT in the scalp without inhibiting 5-alpha reductase in the rest of the body and thus lowering DHT in the rest of the body. So is that what we see with topical finasteride in the literature? Let's talk about it. So first of all, just a quick review, finasteride prevents conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone by inhibiting the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. Um, you have finasteride and dutasteride. Finasteride inhibits one type of 5-alpha reductase and lowers your blood DHT by about, you know, 70%, whereas dutasteride inhibits both types of 5-alpha reductase and lowers your blood DHT by about a, on the, almost 100%, essentially. So this is all good and well. We know that uh, dihydrotestosterone is pretty much the root cause of male pattern hair loss, and taking a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor and lowering dihydrotestosterone in that way has been demonstrated almost definitively to be the most effective way of addressing male pattern hair loss. So the problem is that some individuals get side effects from this type of therapy, and most individuals don't get side effects. Most individuals, myself included, you take this medication, you don't really notice anything, right? However, in double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trials, there are higher rates of sexual dysfunction in individuals that take 5-alpha reductase inhibitors compared to individuals that take a placebo, right? So that's that kind of side effect's pretty much been established. In addition, it's, it's possible that taking finasteride might cause prolonged sexual dysfunction. And this is a really touchy, controversial topic. We don't really know for sure if finasteride causes a post-finasteride syndrome, uh, you know, that's, you know, prolonged sexual dysfunction, brain fog, depression, all of these different side effects. But we know that dihydrotestosterone is a masculinizing hormone. We know that 5-alpha reductase might produce certain uh, neurosteroids that have different, um, you know, anti-anxiety effects and antidepressive effects. So it's possible from a mechanistic perspective that lowering dihydrotestosterone even after puberty might have some kind of side effect. So I, I think it's presumptuous to simply discount individuals that are experiencing post-finasteride syndrome and saying this is all 100% psychosomatic. I, I think that is presumptuous and I think it's very possible that finasteride might cause some type of post-finasteride syndrome. And when you're talking about treating a cosmetic condition like hair loss, the tolerance for side effects is really low, right? Because you're talking about a man, usually in his 20s or 30s, who has his whole life ahead of him, right? Maybe he has plans to have kids. Maybe have he has plans to do all these different types of things. And if this man, maybe in, in like a one in a million chance, this man gets post-finasteride syndrome, that ruins his like the rest of his life, right? So we're not talking about a 75-year-old woman with heart failure. We're not talking about a 68-year-old man with metastatic prostate cancer. We're talking about a young man with the rest of his life ahead of him who's completely healthy, seeking treatment for a cosmetic condition, right? So the tolerance for side effects in this case, in my opinion, is much lower than when it comes to other types of medical conditions. So back to topical finasteride. Like I said earlier, topical finasteride, we want to see reductions in scalp DHT without seeing reductions in uh, blood DHT. And what we see is actually when people use topical finasteride, most of the time, they lower both scalp DHT and blood DHT almost to the same extent as um, oral finasteride, right? Which kind of defeats the purpose of the topical treatment, right? The purpose is to lower scalp DHT without affecting uh, blood DHT. However, there was one study where the researchers were able to um, find a formulation at a particular dosage that was able to lower scalp DHT without having as much as an effect on blood DHT. However, the researchers used a very specific formulation for this, a formulation that you're probably not going to have access to, and they use a really, really small volume. They used 0.1 milliliters. So I personally use one milliliter of minoxidil twice per day, and sometimes even one milliliter of liquid, I find I have difficulties covering my entire scalp with one milliliter of solution, right? I might have to use 1.2 milliliters. I might have to use 1.4 milliliters. So if you're using 0.1 milliliters of solution, in my opinion, it's going to be really, really difficult to cover the entire surface area of your scalp. So, so that's just one thing I'll say. 
And then also I should mention that there actually have been fairly high quality studies done on topical finasteride, you know, comparing topical finasteride to oral finasteride. And what they find is that topical finasteride, it, it's actually pretty effective, right? It's probably more effective than something like topical minoxidil, but it might not be as effective as something like oral finasteride. And it certainly hasn't been proven to the extent of oral finasteride when it comes to preventing progression of male pattern hair loss over the long term. So essentially what I would say <laughs> is that, and you know, this isn't medical advice. Don't listen to what I'm saying. If you know, talk to your healthcare provider, but my opinion on topical finasteride is that this is something that's really interesting. I'm definitely going to keep my eyes peeled for this, but I don't think topical finasteride is ready for prime time. I'm really hoping that there's some manufacturer that can make a formulation of topical finasteride and they can show, you know, good efficacy and good safety in some type of clinical trial. And they can also show in some kind of pharmacokinetic study that they're able to target scalp DHT without impacting uh, blood DHT. If, if they're able to do that, then that would be fantastic. It hasn't really been done yet. So like I said, really interesting concept, topical finasteride, not yet ready for prime time, in my opinion. May as well just take oral finasteride. So that's what I have to say about topical finasteride. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, if I said anything wrong or that you feel is uninformed or misleading, let me know about that as well. I don't know everything. I don't think anyone knows everything and I'm constantly learning. So certainly if there's anything I said that's wrong, let me know about that. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.